Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I'm your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. A tremendous win today. Um, You know, I can't put enough uh, emphasis on just how Mike Norvell has turned his program around this season. Um, I think it's just very imperative that you you can't go into the Florida game taking these guys lightly. Okay, they lost to Vanderbilt today. The Florida-Florida State game is always an emotional game for both sides. I think I think top to bottom we, we can dominate them. The way we're going to lose this game, if we lose this game, is if we try to, if we get caught up in the emotional stuff. Um, and, yeah, I'm skipping right past the Louisiana game because, I mean, there, you know, there's really nothing to talk about there. We we pretty much assumed that we were going to dominate those guys. Respect, you know, worthy opponent. But, you know, we... I, I'm proud of the guys. They were not looking ahead. They were focused. And that's coaching. So Mike Novell has shown us that he can get this team to lock in every week. So, um, you know, the Florida game, I've been to two of these games in my life. Um, it's just it's just different. Um, I, I've been to one in Gainesville. I've been to one in Tallahassee. And it's just you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like two different countries. It's like two different worlds. And, uh, you know, whatever side of the the um, spectrum you're on, you just look at the other team with absolute disgust. Just in football, you know, not, you know, as people or anything like that, just as it relates to football. And, uh, you know, I, I want my boys to put, put a 50 burger on them. You know, that's what I want. I, I just want Florida State to, if you know, to go out and potentially um, win two out of three when it comes to your rivals um, would be tremendous. Um, you know, I'm not trying to do like a season summary or synopsis or anything like that, um, but... You know, it's, it's just a tremendous feeling to to actually finish the season, you know, several games above 500 and look pretty good doing it. Um, you know, I, I said after before the season, I said six and six, seven and five. You can go back and listen to those podcasts and hear them for yourself um, after the LSU game. I seen how the offensive line played. I seen how the defensive line played, and I said eight and four, nine and three. Um, you know, I, I felt like I, I I didn't feel like we were good enough to beat Clemson. I felt like every other team on this schedule after that LSU game, I felt like we could have beat them. I don't know what, and I hate to focus in on the losses, but this season could have really, really been special with this team. Um, and it's, it's still going to be special. I mean, we're hopefully we're headed to a big time bowl game, like the Gator bowl or something like that. Um, with that record, I would look for Florida state to still be in the state of Florida with that record. So, you know, I'm, I want to go to the Gator bowl. Um, I know that's usually like a sec big 10 matchup, but you know, they can pick whoever they want to play in those games. Um, so, or I even go to Orlando, um, just keep it in Florida, man. So we can have a nice home crowd and, uh, you know, potentially, you know, make some more headway in the state of Florida in terms of recruiting. Um, like I said, Mike Norvell has done a tremendous job of flipping this roster. I've said that throughout this whole season. And, uh, I think, you know, ACC championship is the goal next season. Beating Clemson. Beating Clemson, ACC championship. 
um, continuing, continuing to um, get better on the offensive and defensive lines. We need a better play in the secondary. I think, you know, we're not elite. In the, we're, we're really not elite anywhere. We're very great or very, I shouldn't say very great. We're very good at certain positions. Um, but we're not elite anywhere. Um, Jordan Travis has, has taken the quantum leap that I said that he needed to take in the off season. He is, but with a quarterback heavy draft, I would advise him not to go pro, but I don't know his financial situation. So I can't sit here and tell that man what to do. He's got to do what's best for him and his family. I respect that. But if he stays, he potentially is going to be a top 10 pick, in my opinion. If he takes another leap, because it's some plays throughout the game, he just makes erratic throws and he makes bad decisions. If he can eliminate that, I I really think that he can be a first rounder, potentially a top 10 pick. And I mean... You know, from that first game that we saw him at Boston College in 2019 till now, I mean, wow. I mean, that would be tremendous for him. And, you know, I'm happy for the guy, man. He, 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 uh, he, he, he put in the work. He's loyal to the program. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for these guys, man. Um, but getting back to the Florida game, um, very emotional game. Um, Florida's going to come out and try. They they know they can't beat us with the team that they currently have, so they're going to resort to fighting and um, antagonizing and talking. And Florida State, you just can't buy into that. You got to come out and stay focused. Let the scoreboard do the talking. Um, the last time that they were at Florida State, they planted the flag in the field, um, cause we didn't play them in 2020 and we played them at Florida last year. So the last time they were actually at Doak Campbell Stadium, they planted a flag on our field, man. You know, that's, that's. You know, uh, one of the great defensive linemen to ever come through this program, Corey Simon, said that flag was never supposed to make it to midfield. And, you know, if if I'm Mike Norvell, I'm reminding them of that. They disrespected your field. And we just can't let that happen. But you have to play with a control rage. You have to keep your emotions in check and just go out and dominate these guys. The only thing that scares me is their quarterback on offense because of his scrambling ability. He's not an elite passer. He's an elite scrambler. Um, So, and defensively, they've, you know, they've dismissed their best pass rusher, Cox. And um, so, and they lost to Vanderbilt. But, you know, this, anything can happen in these type of games, man. Because emotions run high. And when emotions run high in football, bad things happen. Usually. You know, usually. It's it's very seldom that an emotional player goes out and dominates. It's usually the opposite. Because he's not focusing on playing the game. He's emotional. Um, But, you know... Eight and three is nothing to sneeze at. Um, you know, we haven't been to a bowl game since 2019 against Arizona State, the Sun Bowl, I think. Um, so it's nice to get back to a bowl game. Um, you know, I just, those three losses, man, we could have been special. We could have been very special this year. I think we can be very special next year. We just have to continue to get the players. We have to continue to uh, get stronger in the weight room. And I said before, 
Um, it doesn't take an infinite amount of time to implement your strength and, <clears throat> excuse me, strength and conditioning program. So I haven't seen it in terms of the eyeball test with the strength, strength and conditioning from storms. Um, so, you know, when, when Kirby got to Georgia, the very next season, you saw it. Okay. When, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, Saban got to Alabama, the very next season you saw it. And I know that these are SEC schools and they have like an infinite budget that Florida State doesn't have. But still, they have weights. <laughs> they have a weight room. It may not be as sophist sophisticated as Georgia and Alabama or Clemson, but they, they you know, they, they have access to weights. And you got to get these guys in there and they got to put in the work. So, dominate and win over Louisiana. We pretty much assume that. Um, you didn't want to, you know, get cocky. But, hey, 49-17, total domination. And four-game winning streak, eight and three. And bring on the Gators. Um, thank you for listening. That concludes this instant reaction. Uh, podcast available on YouTube. Podcast available on all podcast platforms. And as always, go nose.